Hey class, how's it going? Hopefully last video, is, unless I have other grade 9 students that really need to pop in here, but um, we're going to finally turn that force gravity into some acceleration, into some velocity. How fast are these things orbiting certain places? Like how fast is a satellite orbiting Earth? How can we figure that out just by like the radius and the mass of the actual um, object? So let's get through that. Let's go to question one, four. Let's go to question four. No, we did question four. Question one. We want question one of the new worksheet, the orbit worksheet. So here's question one. Mass. A 1,500 kilogram satellite is in stable orbit at an altitude. I'm going to put an altitude, not radius, an altitude of 4 times 10 to the 5. Okay? Meters above the Earth's surface. At what speed is it traveling? So I need a velocity in the end. Okay? This. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. This question seems easy. It's, it's a very small sentence and it looks like it's easy. This is a hard question. Um, what am I going to need to get to a velocity? Well, here's what you're going to have to do. To get a velocity, you need an acceleration. To get an acceleration, you need a force centripetal or a force gravity. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to find a force of gravity on this satellite, turn that into an acceleration, and then turn that into velocity. So that's what we're going to do here, okay? So let's find the force of gravity, the gravitational force on this actual satellite. This equals um, big G. So, so big G. E oh wow! Whoa. Big G. Um, m m over radius squared. So let's go through this. Okay. So force of gravity equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And then in brackets, I have my mass of 1,500. 1,500 times, well, I'm going to put brackets here instead because it's too many x's, too many times. 6 times 10 to the 24, that is the mass of Earth. So 1,500 times 6 times 10 to the 24, 6 times 10 to the 24. And then the bottom, we need a radius. I, I, I said that this is an altitude, not a radius. Let's try and make sense of that. There's Earth. Here is the satellite, okay, orbiting around Earth. Okay, the altitude is just this. I need from the satellite to the center of Earth. Okay, so to get that, I need to add the actual radius, which I have as a constant. The radius from Earth to the outside, where like I'm standing, is 6.38 times 10 to the 6. So let's add that to my altitude to actually get our radius that this thing is orbiting at. So 4 times 10 to the 5 plus 6.38 times 10, 10 to the 6. All right. I will say there's no nice way to add these scientific notation-wise, okay? You just have to make them into real numbers. So like 4 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 plus 6, 3, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? Add those together. You will get 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. Or... We can turn this into 6.78 times 10 to the 6. Okay? When you're adding sign of notation, notation doesn't work very well. You just have to actually make them to, I call them real numbers. Again, uh, non-scientific notation numbers. And then add them together. Okay? Um, but when I do that, I end up with 6.78 times 10 to the 6. So we're going to use that as our radius. Let's get rid of this now. So my radius, which one right over here. 6.78 times 10 to the 6 is what I'm going to put in here. 6.78 times 10 to the 6, and that has to be squared. All right, let's go through some steps here. I'm going to just move this over here. Force gravity equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Let's do the top first. What is 1,500 times 6? 1,500 times 6 at 9,000. Okay, 9,000 times 10 to the 24. You could change this now to go with scientific notation. If you wanted to go 9 times 10 to the 27, you can now. It doesn't matter. In the end, you're going to be dividing by some stuff, and it might make it easier to change it all to scientific notation. It'll work out in the end. As long as you um, leave it like this or change it to 9 times 10 to the 27, you'll still get the same answer in the end. I'm going to leave it like this for now. Divided by... What is 6.78 times 6.78? 6.78 times 6.78. 45.9. 45.9. 45.9. 
45.9 times 10 to the, again, 6 times 2 is 12. All right. Now let's do this part. So force gravity, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Let's figure this out now. Let's do this. So what is 9,000 divided by 45.9? I get 196. 196. And then to the power of 12 times 10 to the power of 12. And the reason is because um, again, 24 minus 12 is 12. So there you go, 196 times 10 to the power of 12. Let's actually now finish this. Last step. What is force of gravity? Let's go 196 times 6.67. I get 1,307 times 10 to the power of just 1. Okay, a negative 11 plus 12 is just to the power of 1. Which means, again, I can turn this to like 1.307 to the power of 4, or honestly, I'm just going to add a 0. I'm going to turn this into 13,070 newtons. Okay, and that is what I should get roughly um, for my force on this thing. 13,070 newtons. Okay, so I'm going to write that down up here. My force gravity, which also equals force centripetal, is 13,070. Okay, I'm going to erase this. Let's get to our next step. So the next step's not too hard. These are going to get a little easier. Let's turn this into an actual acceleration. How do I do that? Well, that one's easy. Force equals mass times acceleration. I have my force. This is the force that's keeping it in the, in the actual centripetal motion. So 13,070 equals, what's my mass? 1,500 times acceleration, so my acceleration is going to equal, just divide out 13,070 divided by 1,500 gives me 8.7 meters per second squared. So there's my acceleration. And lastly, that's my velocity. Okay? Acceleration equals V squared over R, which means 8.7 8 equals V squared over my radius. There's, there's that radius again. 6.78 times to the power of 6. Okay? 6.78 times 10 to the power of 6. So I'm going to go 8.7 times 6.78. And I get basically, this is going to turn into 59 times 10 to the power of 6 equals v squared, so square root this. So turn it into a real number. If I go 5, 9 with six, like six zeros after it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's square root that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I should get a velocity of 7,681 7, meters per second. 7,681 meters per second. Like I said, looks like a nice, easy, kind of small question. Ends up being quite long. All right? But that's how we can tie in our force gravity and our force, like with our acceleration and our velocity. Let's do one more question, just part A, um, to kind of look at as well, using these circular motion formulas to figure out some work here. Okay? So we're going to require question two, just part A. So it says, oh, went too far. It says the moon Titan orbits the planet Saturn with a period, a period of 1.4 times 10 to the 6. Okay, the average radius, the radius is 1.2 times 10 to the 9. Okay, what is Titan's centripetal acceleration? So again, we look at acceleration as being two things. Acceleration equals v squared over r. Or you also do have from last week, I know it's not there, but it's, it, oh, it is here, it's right here. Right here, four pi r, say, four pi squared r, or period squared, okay? So we also have this one, acceleration equals four pi squared radius over t squared. This is what we're gonna use to figure out the acceleration of this actual object. So let's go through that. Acceleration equals four 
multiply by 3.14 squared times my radius, which is 1.2 times 10 to the 9, and then over 1.4 times 10 to the 6 squared. Okay, let's just do my whole top. Okay, I do my whole top. Let's go 3.14 times 3.14 times four, and I get like 39. I'm gonna just times it by 1.2, times 1.2. I get 47 on the top. I'll get 47 times 10 to the nine. Okay, that's on top. My bottom, what is 1.4 at 1.4 times 1.4 at 1.96? 1.96, the power of 12, times 10 to the power of 12. All right, cool. So now let's divide this out, see what the acceleration is. 47 divided by 1.96. I get 23.9. So 23.9 times 10 to the, and I get like negative three. Negative three. So if I'm moving my decimal over three spots, one, two, three, I actually have an answer. Acceleration equals 0.0. .0 239 meters per second squared. Okay, so it is a very slow acceleration. It's a very slow acceleration. The thing is, if I were to actually find my velocity, I know it doesn't ask you to find your velocity. This is still a moon, a moon that is moving. So my acceleration is 0 0.0239. Let's actually find the velocity, okay? That sounds like a, like seems like a very small acceleration, and that's just the acceleration acceleration keeping it in a circular path. This moon is still moving very fast, okay? So if I want to find the actual speed of this moon now, again, acceleration equals V squared over R. So 0 0.0239, okay? And I'm multiply it by my radius, which is 1.2 times 10 to the nine. Well, 1.2 times 0.20239, I get, okay, I get 0 0.2, sorry, 0 0.028 times 10 to the 9, and I'm still going to square root that. So if I go and I move this over a bunch of decimals, I'm going to get basically 2, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, square root 2, 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I still get this thing moving at a velocity of like 5,291 meters per second. So it's still moving at like 5,300 meters per second. That's crazy. It's just this is the only acceleration you need to keep it in a curve. Okay? So there's how we can, again, take our force of gravity, our force centripetal, and turn it into these velocities and accelerations. Um, again, there are, I think there's going to be like four questions this week for the assignment. Last kind of topic. It'll touch on finding those force gravities and then kind of these kind of questions here. All right, class, thanks so much for everything. Um, I'll talk to you next week about our last little product. Hope this goes well.